How Frieden just became the top enemy of all time from any news. Let's see what he has to say. If there was ever to be a perfect adaptation for any anime ever, it would probably have to be Freerun and Studio Madhouse's immaculate presentation of it. This feels bad because we just watched an anime, an episode, a video about Classroom of the Elite and how Classroom of the Elite anime is fucking trash compared to the light novel. While well, you have Frieden just popping up saying, BEST ADAPTATION EVER! It's not often we get a literal one-to-one -one of anime to manga, but it's in the rare occasions that we do that they're never as refined as this is. I mean, Damn, the, the art looks so good. I've seen so far, not a single cut or change has oh, been made that Fucking Farron just walking, just deflecting Lugner's attack. So original. cool. It's about as faithful as faithful can get. So, for a manga that's already popular to be adapted flawlessly, it's only natural it receives high ratings in accordance with that. I wonder if it's still rank one on my anime list because it was ahead of Brotherhood. But anytime that happens, the Brotherhood Brigade, the Discord notifications go off and the army is assembled and they take them down, right? The thing is, Freerun didn't just get rated it's highly. still first? It got okay. so many good reviews that it's now the highest rated anime ever. Oh shit! Granted, it's sitting at about 90,000 reviews compared to Full Metal Alchemist's 2.1 million, but to even surpass an anime that hasn't been dethroned since interspecies reviewers... <laughs> That's crazy to me. And I keep hearing this fucking name. Are we ever gonna watch this on YouTube, guys? Y'all haven't really, uh, you know, in, uh, recommended this for the anime this yet, but... I keep seeing this title being thrown around. It's crazy. This was rank one for a day or something. I bet it's just for fucking memes. People voted this shit up there. Species reviewers. Well, that's a feat that I think is worth mentioning. One I honestly don't have a solid explanation for, but I can at least try by highlighting what I think makes Freerun so good. So, I'm just gonna say this right away. What makes Freerun so good? I honestly don't know. I don't even know how to put into words how to describe the, the atmosphere, the nostalgia, the somber feeling, but also the comedy and the funny moments the show embodies during these downtime slice of life moments. And on top of that, you have the crazy action that hits you out of fucking nowhere. This animation that's so fucking good, you're just re realizing like, what the fuck? This anime can do this? A combination of those two is why I'm personally watching Frieden. Also, Frieden Burger, Frieden Cake, Frieden Feet. Fern pouts, moments like that too. People love that shit. It's very easy to just meme on and, and and like on social media, you'll see a bunch of clips and just like freedom faces and meme stuff going on, which also adds on to why people love this show. At the beginning, but if you're looking for a fantasy where there's nonstop action and lots of conflict, you're probably gonna get bored and not enjoy free that Exactly. Much. This is which is even more impressive and amazing that a show like that, which doesn't really capture everyone's attention, because again, this is a pretty, not a big brain show, but a show that is not fast enough to catch the attention of all the kids. But despite that, it was still able to top Brotherhood and become rank one of anime. That's really amazing. Isn't your classic power fantasy or adventure to slay the demon lord, but instead a slow burn about what comes after. It's a new game plus. Yes, there are some scenes that may very well belong in a power fantasy, but with those being far and few between, what you're left with is an emotional introspective on what it's like to live, well, practically forever. Forever is not exactly right, but to us who can only live between, I hope, Yeah, relative to humans. Years, 1,000 plus might as well be forever. It's a length of time that makes one, two, or even ten years seem like nothing. So, a journey in which a decade was spent slaying the Demon Lord was to free run nothing more than one one hundredth of a life filled with so much more. To us who I assume are between the ages of 20 and 40 based on my YouTube analytics. <laughs> wait, 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 this is actually interesting. Wait, what's the breakdown? Let's see this breakdown. I think um a lot of kids lie on YouTube. So if you look at the look at this, hold up. Between the ages Wait. of 20 and 40 based Breakdown. On my so all the third all the 18 to 24 is a big portion of this. This is actually 13 to 17 cuz let's get real. If you're 13 or 17 years old, like between that age range, are you really going to say that you're that young on YouTube? Fuck no. I did it myself when I was a kid too. I'd be like, "Nope, I'm 18." So I'm sure a lot of people splash over, but interesting breakdown here, huh? This is pretty much exactly what my audience looks like too. Maybe a little bit higher on the 18 and 24 side. Analytics. That's only 4ish months when scaled down to the life we've lived so far. It's a marginal period of time. Do not tell me your age in chat. You guys are all legal of age adults in here. I do not no, don't tell me your age. It's a fucking liability. I don't care what you type. Y'all are eight, all 18. Everybody typing numbers from now on here are just memeing to make me look bad. Time that may seem significant when we're experiencing it, but in the grand scheme of life as a whole, those four months are something we'll barely remember when we're older. 
It's like asking you to remember any set of four months from when you were in elementary school. Don't remember. The time we experienced then would definitely be fresh in our memory closer to that, but the more we live and the more we experience, the less significant those memories start to become. The weight they once carried before would slowly start to fade as newer, more substantial memories take their place. That's kind of really sad if you think about it. All those really important moments that was so important during the moment that slowly fades out as you forget, as passage of time goes on, and you're like, did that even happen? Damn. I imagine this is something we experience hundreds of times Too real. in our own lives, but what if such a thing became as common as breathing? What if life extended so long that the world around you changed more than you yourself did? Would you live differently and experience life slower, or would you perhaps treasure relationships and get to know people better? I think, I don't know, there would definitely be different phases. If I were to achieve this level of immortality and time becomes so meaningless, I think there would be a point in my life where I'd be like, everything is more pointless, y'all are just ants to me. I will only know you for an insignificant amount of time, then you will get replaced by someone else. I will never get attached to anybody because the last time I got attached, it hurt my feelings. So I will cut myself off from everybody else and be distant. There would be probably a phase like that. And then another phase, which Frieden is embarking on right now, which is more like, oh, maybe I should appreciate my time, my limited time I have with these people, because again, their lives are so short compared to mine. So if just living every day, I just ignore them, Will it make my life any better? Maybe I should treasure these memories so that my life will be a little bit more meaningful moving forward. Different phases. I'm surprised that she didn't go crazy. Don't people that go immortal eventually, like, their mind breaks from, like, the passage of time becoming so warped to the point they start doing all kinds of fucked up shit? That's some freedom and alter ego shit that could also happen. I doubt this shit would ever go on about those kind of topics, though. Would you traverse the world getting to know everything you could, or would you perhaps estrange yourself and live apart from society? These aren't exactly the questions Freerin is asking, but they are the concepts that are explored through her life as an elf. And this is a very interesting thing. I always, like, I didn't, I thought Freerin being, like, a lazy person who gets up really late, that just kind of, like, fucks around, reading books and spells like that. I thought it was just, like, a part of her character that's supposed to be, like, a quirky elf girl. But then it's like, no, she does this because the passage of time has become so... It just becomes so warped and distorted to her. Because nothing really matters, because time goes so for so long, she can just spend months just wasting time doing nothing. So all her scenes just being lazy in bed saying, haha, relatable freedom. Actually, there's like a deeper meaning to it, which is pretty cool. And it's that take on a story about life beyond one single journey that I think elevates Freerin to a level not many anime get to. It's a different portrayal of fantasy that's mostly episodic by nature, but mm -hmm. at the same time captures how Freerin lives her life of near immortality. So, in an era where fantasy anime are a dime a dozen, so it's many quite isekais. refreshing to see one that does something different for once. We're not limited by the constraints of one single adventure or the lifespan of those who embark on them, but are rather shown what living forever does to someone. It's a deep dive into the fantasy genre as a whole, and it does well to deconstruct it through the eyes of someone who's experienced every aspect of it. One such aspect that really stuck out to me was the innovation of magic to the point that spells of the past were obsolete now. Magic once thought undefeatable oh, that was now track magic. more than ordinary yeah. offensive magic. This demon who'd developed a spell which could penetrate any defense had been sealed for 80 years and was awoken to find his magic useless now. It turns out his magic was researched extensively, and in only a few years, humans had incorporated it into their own magic. That was a chilling moment when Fern shot down the, the demon with Zoltrak, and she didn't even know what magic she was using. And they're like, what the fuck? What are you using right now? It's like, oh yeah, we just everybody just uses it now. It's pretty much just like an auto attack. They had created these powerful new defensive spells, easily capable of blocking that previously undefendable demon magic. Fight animation, look at this shit, man. I know that's man. not really that big of a deal, but I like the idea of the passage of time actually having an effect on the world. I mean, normally the days, months, or years which pass in other series aren't enough to show any substantial change in the world itself. <laughs> Mushoku Tensei casting a little bit of a stray bullet here? Maybe not. When it comes to Freerun, though, it's that passage of time and the changes that have occurred because of it that are on display most frequently since that's the whole point of the story. We're constantly shown through the parallels of flashbacks in the present, exactly what it is that's different for Freerun, and how it is that change is perceived by her. It is really cool though, whenever we visit a new town and stuff like that, it's like, oh, all these like old people, or even their grandparents, Freerun knew them, and it's like a callback to her 
past memories of what she did back then and that ties into let's like a lesson maybe something about height or about religion and atheism and how she believed religion how, how like faith can you know contribute to someone's life or like himmel moments where himmel's doing all these fucking riz moments and like ice and funny ice moments it's really nice to see like a callback of past memory because of where we're at right now and then previous friends that we had now to be a bit more specific with regards to the plot itself Freerun is a story that starts after the Demon Lord is defeated. New Game this Plus. This grand adventure lasting 10 years in total is already at its conclusion and begins with the aftermath. The I'm telling you, return. we need a fucking OVA movie, some kind of side story about the journey towards the Demon King, please. From their perilous journey and it's from there that Freerun sets off to continue her own. She leaves her party and continues her pursuit to know everything magic. To her, this century-long adventure is nothing more than... Don't you... No, 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 no. Of course I know this freedom feet right here. Every opportunity, they'll flex her feet. More than whimsical enlightenment, but to everyone else who she'd left behind, such a time was life itself. Even in the short 50 years it took for her to return, the closest people she'd adventured with were now old. Freerun had never considered just how fleeting a human's life really was, so to see them change so much and even pass away shortly after... Well, that was a revelation that made her intrigued in something else for once. She was now curious as to what it was like to live as a human. In what was essentially just the blink of an eye for her, these people who she'd only known briefly were gone now. And sometimes I wonder if Frieden actually cherished those memories a lot. Like, we know for a fact that Himmel was probably like, Himmel, Heiter, and Eisen. You know, they got more limited lifespan. I don't know how much life is going to live for, but like they were living it up. This is like their most important time in their life. And it's probably their most important memory. But to Frieden, those 10 years are like, meh. It was just like a blip of her life. She like, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's correct to say she didn't care about it, but she definitely didn't care about it as much as like Himmel did, right? It, it was despite spending 10 years traveling the world with them that the memories she'd made could be described as nothing more than ephemeral. Sure, to us, a decade was more than enough time to get close to anyone, but to Freerun, whose understanding of relations were fundamentally different, what she'd realized was that she actually knew very little about her companions. So much so that she would actually regret not trying to learn more about them. So, as the years went on and Freerun's journey continued, she would make an effort to interact <laughs> more with others. I remember this. This is out of fucking nowhere. I turned this fucking flashing. ...and try her best to recoup with the party members that were still alive. Eventually, she would find herself joined by a new party, and it's the introduction of them and their journey on that same heroic path of 80 years ago that brings us to a new story of parallels, continuations, and connections. Whoa. Parallels because of the constant back and forth of Freerun's past and present. Right, all the callback memories. because of the way events from the past are revisited 80 years later, and connections because of the increasing consideration Freerun starts to have for her new companions. The old Freerun would have had no problem spending years doing one single task, but with new human companions pushing her forward, she begins to realize that just because something's brief doesn't mean it's insignificant. So, it's that contrast between Freerun's dismissive nature towards time and everyone else's desire to not waste it that constantly reminds us of how time is always flowing here. It's a recurring theme that's even more supported through the numerous flashbacks from 80 years ago. Combine this with Freerun's growth beyond complacency towards something a bit more sympathetic, and what we get is an emotional, character-driven narrative on what living forever might do to a person. And this is gonna get fucked up in the future. I don't know if they're gonna do it in the manga, or like how the story's gonna end, but this... Eventually, there'll be a moment where a huge time skip will happen, and like Farron and Stark, they won't be children anymore. They're gonna look like, you know, how Flame looked. Whenever there was like, you know how we were talking, having Flame flashbacks, and she was like young for a while? And she was like a granny, and it's like, damn, she got old. Aging is not a sad thing, but it's definitely a little bit depressing to see them, like, turn older as they head into the next phase of their life. Like, and, like, you're going to see Fern and Stark get older, too, and they're, they're going to die. And it's like, that's fucked up. <sighs> that's fucked up. That's when we got to go on a different journey, and I guess, <laughs> find new friends. It's this engaging story where the impermanence of life becomes increasingly apparent. Before, she may not have understood what that meant, but it's as we watch her travel and reflect on the past that we see her come to not only appreciate the nature of life, but also respect the flow of time too. Both of which are the core aspects shown pretty much every episode. 
is she respecting time a little bit more? Hasn't she been saying like, oh, it's going to take us 10 years? Ah, don't worry about it. And first, like, that's fucking a decade of my life, bitch. What are you talking about? Yeah. When I said Freerin was episodic by nature, what I meant was that the narrative was loosely connected through the one or two independent stories happening between them. Yeah, every time we go somewhere, we visit a town, we visit some kind of place that Freerin's visited before, and then it's like, boom, call back to a distant memory we have with the hero party, and then that relates to whatever story at hand. Yes, there is a general goal in which Freerin is striving to accomplish, but yeah. that's rarely, if ever, the focus of the episode. And I'm starting to realize, like, we're never gonna get there. I thought that we would get there in a couple episodes, there might be like a time skip or something, but it's like, nah. We're not gonna get there for a long ass time. In fact, this whole story is just based on the journey to that destination. Right? I, I think that's what's happening. What we focus on instead are the smaller events occurring in whatever town, village, or city Freerin finds herself in, then how it relates to the adventure she had 80 years ago. Yep. So, if I had to compare Freerin to any anime already out there, I would have to say it's closest to Violet Evergarden. I don't think it's anywhere near as emotional. I haven't seen this anime, but I remember everyone talking about it and how sad it was. But that episodic portrayal of independent stories throughout one larger one is actually very similar to each other. You also have a main protagonist who lacks a fundamental understanding of what it means to be human, and it's their self-discovery of it that makes Freerin and Violet very similar too. So, regardless of whether it's love or life that these two are trying to understand, I think the place they both start out at is pretty much the same. They're both overwhelmed by the regrets of their past, and are both actively doing whatever they can to mend that. It could also just be the soundtrack by Evan Call making me think that, but I'm fairly certain the stoic- The soundtrack is very good. It's just really- it, ma it makes it very immersive. You're just set into the environment. Female protagonist going on a journey of understanding is something I've seen before. Now, if there is one thing I'm gonna complain about, it would have to be the way that pretty much every character is stoic. I'm not saying their lack of expression hmm. is a bad thing, but their composed Linny, behavior and soft mannerisms combined together with Freerin's leisured progression uh, makes us- Stark isn't stoic, but I guess a lot of them are stoic, huh? Now that I think about it, Lugner- Well, I thought all the demons were stoic by nature. That's- I don't know. They, they all kind of see- Well, maybe the green-haired guy, the boy, wasn't as stoic, but definitely some of the girls, they just kind of just cold-faced nothing, huh? Slow story feel even slower. I get it's the nature of characters like Freerin and Fern, but to some that may seem boring since those are the characters that are on screen most of the time. And that's what I find most impressive about with this anime. Being able to get in rank 1 despite having all these slow times which should piss off the masses. A bunch of people are just casual anime watchers that can't handle, you know, slow content like this. That's why it's so impressive it's still rank 1. The time. It's a stark contrast from the usual high octane, high emotion. Did he just say stark contrast? And then, it, yeah, I'm not crazy there, right? He said stark contrast and then Stark showed up. But like, again, I think as soon as Stark showed up, the show just like immediately went to the next level. Shonen protagonists we usually see. Once again, this is just a nitpick though. So if you're fine watching slow paced dramas with emotional story bits and the occasional action, yeah. you'll definitely be fine watching Freerin. It's a captivating story despite its episodic format, perfectly blends several heavier themes we rarely get in a fantasy anime, then presents these well-developed characters in a setting both intriguing and memorable. They're factors which all come together to make this series a worthwhile one. I don't know if that's actually enough to make it worthy of the number one spot on Mal, but as far as adapting from the source to anime goes, Freerin has done it the best by a landslide. The anime may not be for everyone, but in a time where fantasy anime are pumped out 10 to 20 a season, it's quite nice to get one that's both different and high quality. It's an actually good polished one, but yeah. yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about Freerin. Do you think it's worthy of the number one spot on Mallard? I'm not sure if it's worthy of the number one spot, but I definitely know right now it is the anime that everyone's talking about. And I wish there's one thing that Annie News talked about in this video that he didn't cover was... I don't know if relatability is the right word, but go to the video guys and sub to his channel and like his video. But like, you know, all those like freedom, like burger moments or like all the memeable moments, those kind of moments, I think are really pushing this show to the next level. Maybe it's just anecdotal, but whenever I go on Twitter and I see a bunch of like super highly engaged posts with thousands of likes of just freedom, just fucking looking, you know, with like a, you know, holding the potion, just looking at you or the freedom burger moments or just like freedom feet service. Moments like that, you might not think it's like significant, but I truly think that people see shit like that, they get interested in what anime is this, and they find it that way. 
But yeah, great video from Annie News. I'm just glad that y'all are enjoying Freedom in my channel. I'm just glad that we can cover this anime. And God bless a fucking 28th episode season. We eating good.